Hello, we have a um, dryer, hips dryer today that um, the uh, timer for the drying section of it is not working. There are two separate timers. One of them is for cooling, the other one is for drying. Drying is usually uh, 60 minutes and the cooling one is usually 15 minutes. Uh, so basically when you turn a, a timer to 20 minutes, it starts to count down until it zeroes, then the cooling part starts and goes all the way down to zero and the machine stops. Right now we have the power breaker off. Make sure you have it off so when you're turning this, the lights are not coming on and the machine is not gonna work, okay? So we gotta start by taking the front hood off, which you should have a key from the manufacturer or the person who sold the machine, he will give it to you. You will have that. So just open the hood. There are two screws in here, one in this end, one in that end. Um, it's very simple, you take that off. Okay, so now everything should come off. This will just simply lift it up, but don't pull it because there are wires that are connected in here. It's very simple, with, connected with one connection over here, all these wires are connected with this one simple connector. Push both ends and pull it out. So this whole thing is gonna come off, okay? But again, double check that your power is off, the power breaker is off, okay? So I do have the part right now. I'm gonna show you that these are the uh, timers that you know we're gonna change. This is the timer that we're gonna replace and I'm gonna do it in a minute. So we got the part, it's a genuine part. Um, this is the model number. M410901P, usually they just add a P to the newer part. Uh, if your machine is older, uh, probably you don't have that uh, P in there, but it's uh, the same part. Um, but basically what you have to look for is the same type of a connections that you have in here and same type of a connections that you have on the older one should match. And what we're gonna do is take this one out first, then just simply remove every single cable that is on the existing one and put it in this uh, new part that we're gonna put in. As simple as that. Uh, but just make sure that you're doing it exactly uh, the same way and it's, it's better to do it one by one um, to not get yourself confused, okay? Um, I would do, um, this is for uh, you know a backup plan. If you would like, just take a picture of it first with your phone, just to have a reference. If you mess up something, if something is not right, you will or you forget about it. Just uh, take a good picture that shows all the locations of the wires, and from there on, you can go back to the picture and make sure that you're doing everything correctly. There is one. Uh, item in here that is an insulator that is like a cardboard that is underneath the uh, timer. Make sure you put that back in there the way it is. Uh, sometimes the part, uh, the new part comes with that or sometimes it doesn't. But you gotta make sure to put that back underneath. So what we're gonna do is pull this out, slides out, okay, and you will see all three screws in here. We're gonna take those screws out. Pretty short screws. And the timer will simply come out. Okay. Now, what we can do is, like I mentioned, just put the switch the way it was on the bottom. And take the cables one by one and place it in here. First one. Okay. 
the this one goes to the indicator light in the front this one is a jumper That jumper goes from there to the side one over here. That jumper goes from there to there. Okay, so you're almost cleared on the first two connectors. I do have one still left over here, which is the one that goes that it doesn't, I don't need to remove that because that one goes into. Um, the timer itself, so that will stay with the old switch, okay? So now we're gonna go to the red wire. Already have the first and the second connectors filled, okay? So the red wire comes out. It's a double, okay? So there are two wires going in there. Make sure you put it on the middle one. Slide it in. There are a couple more wires left. They're all white. White goes in here, the last one. There's one more white in the middle. Take that out, goes into the middle one. This is very simple, it's not a um, hard thing to do. Just gotta make sure you take the wires one by one and plug it where you're taking it on from the old switch, you put it in the new switch. Simple as that. Now we don't need the old timer, okay? Let's put it on the side. Now we're gonna make sure that this cardboard that I was talking about, that's an insulator, stays underneath between this bracket and the switch. have to play with it until you align it. There we go. Okay, and that's just basically to uh, keep it kind of insulated between this, this switch and the other one. So between the two switches, there is some type of insulation in there. We can turn it around. Now we gotta put the screws back. Make sure that they're aligned. We put one of them in there. Make sure you start it with uh, your fingers. Don't use the, uh, you know, drill to tie a screw at the beginning because if it goes in wrong, it's gonna strip the screw or damage the switch treads, so you won't be able to do that. The second one. And the last one. You gotta just play with the alignment and sometimes the cardboard that you have in the back you might get in front of it. So play with the cardboard and the positioning of the, um, the screw. 
until you get it right. Once you got it in, you can just tie it with the screwdriver. Okay, and it should be good. Make sure it's nice and tight. There we go. There we go. Ah. Now you can put the head back. Okay. It's nice. So we're gonna, so we got the screws in, the wires are in, the bracket is sitting right. We're gonna put it back in now. So now we're gonna do what we did before. We're just gonna do it in the reverse order. We're gonna connect this connector. There's only one connector. Just goes in nice and easy, clicking. Okay, make sure there are no wires being pinched. Okay, so put it back pretty simple. Now we have this one screw and one on the other side, the opposite side. Very simple. If you would have called a repairman they will do the same thing for at least a couple of hundred dollars, at least, with the trip charge and parts and everything. Parts for this was about a hundred dollars, so they would charge you about three hundred dollars, to minimum to four hundred dollars. Uh, you can do this in less than ten minutes, for around hundred dollars just for the parts. And it, as you can see, it doesn't take that much time. Uh, you can just do it in uh, less than 15 minutes or 20 minutes if it's the first time that you're doing it. The uh, main thing is to uh, make sure you're putting the cables in the correct position. As you can see, the timer is on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start. And wait for it to see if it's going to stop. If the timer is working correctly, it should stop in the time that you put the timer on. This instant, I'm putting it for like just a couple of minutes to make sure the timer is working. And it's going to stop. It's a little hard to see it by naked eye to see if it's moving. Uh, you just got to give it some time, uh, a couple of minutes, to see if it's going to uh, stop. Hopefully this video helped you. And if you don't mind, uh, go ahead and subscribe to this video. I would appreciate it and uh, I would love to hear feedbacks. If you have some, I would love to hear it. Looks like it's gonna stop in any second. Now, I can see it that it's moving very slowly. It's almost there. I have other videos that uh, I'm repairing different stuff and I'm trying to help everybody uh, to do the stuff by themselves and not to pay too much money to repair. Hopefully I can do my job by helping you. And if you don't mind, put a like on, your, on my video and Subscribe to my channel, please. 
This was simple. There we go. It stopped. So my timer is working. Have a great day. Until next video.